Most of us have a game that we remember fondly from our childhood. Something about that mere sound of the music or seeing the graphics teleports us back to those simpler times. The countless hours glued to the CRT screen or the handheld. For me, this game was the original Zoo Tycoon. This was a tycoon business management game released in 2001. Imagine a 7 year old me at the store with my mom. She's busy looking for clothing for the start of the school year and what meets my eye but a game box with a happy elephant and a shiny title, Zoo Tycoon. I flip the box excitedly and see that this is in fact a PC game. It showed off some screenshots. I was hyped. My parents had recently bought a computer and playing the games that came with it was getting old. So I excitedly run back to my mom asking her to buy it. She didn't give it a second thought. It was in the bargain bin and she thought it was a tabletop game or something. This was the first PC game I ever owned as a kid. And to say I became obsessed with it at the time was an understatement. I had only played a couple platformers and pinball, and I had no idea games like this existed. Games where you could build things, manage parks, animals, design things, and cause mayhem. Today I'm going to go a trip down memory lane and show how deep this little game was, and see if it still holds up today. For the video, I'm going to be using the complete collection that includes the expansions for water animals and dinosaurs, but as a kid I only had the base vanilla game without these add-ons. Starting up the game, you're greeted with the iconic theme song playing with the main menu. Here you can select from tutorials, scenarios, and challenge maps. The tutorials really helped me and my siblings learn the game, as Zoo Tycoon is not really dumbed down for children. Unlike the 2013 reboot, we don't talk about the reboot. But apart from the basics, we really didn't play the scenario portions that much. All our time was spent in the freeform mode, a blank canvas where you could design and build to your heart's content. Of course, you still had money to manage, but there was no restrictions on what sort of things you had to complete by a certain time. The main attraction of your zoo and of the game was the animals. Between all the expansions, there was over a hundred species to choose from. And I really liked that the game made you consider the habitat that these creatures lived in when you were making their exhibits. You can't just have animals in tiny cages and expect a thriving, profitable zoo. If you want to make a profit, you have to keep your animals happy and healthy. Different animals have different needs, but they are all picky AF in this game. They need an exact blend of terrain. For example, these lions here, they prefer savanna grass, dirt, sand, and fresh water, but in precise amounts. God forbid you put one too many sand tiles because they will get mad for some reason. I'm pretty sure lions would be happy with most types of grass in real life. And the same applies to trees and bushes. The animals want the ones from their native habitat and nothing else. But even then, you want to keep the game not paused because they hate certain trees and rocks, even from the same biome. I don't know why, just to make your life miserable, but at least they'll give you a little feedback with a little happy or sad face, providing feedback in real time. Thankfully, there's a feature called Zookeeper Recommendations that tells you what the animal thinks about its enclosure and what you need to do to keep it happy. Keeping it open while you're editing the terrain and all the different plants helps a lot. The process of making these exhibits might seem super picky, but as a game loop, it does a good job of making you care about the animal's environment and also leaves some room for creativity. Playing it now, I try to place trees and rocks in clumps so they don't just appear randomly scattered. And I think it makes the environments look pretty lifelike, graphics permitting. It's really pixelated, but it is what it is. Another thing to keep in mind is fencing. There are many options, some stronger than others. Just don't make the mistake of placing chimps with chain link fences. Also don't put trees near fences if the animal can climb because that will also lead to this. As a manager of the zoo, you're also tasked with hiring staff to keep your well-oiled machine running. Zookeepers feed and heal your animals. They capture escaped animals when you accidentally delete a fence. And their most important duty, they scoop the poop. My life be like, ooh, uh, yeah. You can hire maintenance workers to repair old fences, empty garbage cans, pick up litter, and repair tank filters. Repairing the fence is really important because depending on how cheap of a fence you use, they will break down ever so often. So you want to either replace them manually or have these guys working overtime repairing them. Even as a kid, I always thought it was unfair that these guys got paid less than half of what the pooper scoopers make per month. They're really essential, to be honest. There's also educators that tour guests to exhibits and help increase donations. There's marine specialists, which are basically water zookeepers. Scientists are the lab coats that worked in Jurassic Park. 
they care for your dinosaurs, and they also have the task of cleaning up after them. That is one big pile of shit. Something else I didn't know when I was younger is that you can assign zookeepers to certain enclosures so they don't have to walk across the map and waste time and leave animals on the other side of the map starving. You can keep them localized to different exhibits. You can also manage what tasks the maintenance workers make so you could have some dedicated to garbage cleanup and others dedicated to fences. It's really flexible. Animals and staff are all fine and dandy, but who's going to pay for all this? The salaries, the construction, the animal food? Your guests, of course. You set the price of the gate, and they come flooding in. They each have a favorite animal as well as thoughts of their own. The menu is super helpful in keeping track of upset guests needing food, drink, rest, and having to use the bathroom. A similar menu exists for animals, which helps a lot. Food-wise, at first you're only going to have vending machines unlocked and maybe a hot dog stand, but things unlock progressively as the game time passes. I think it's every two or three months in-game. These unlocks also add new animals, fences, paths, the works. It helps not to overwhelm newer players with so many choices. You start with a few and you're drip fed the rest. Apparently restaurants are the best choice for guests because they refill your hunger, thirst and rest stats while also not producing garbage for them to throw onto the ground. All your needs will be met. I'm hungry. In a minute. One of the most fascinating features in this game is a research system that unlocks endangered animals, shelters, training for staff bonuses, and more. You set the funding and the categories you want researched, and the game just progresses through the list for you. As a kid when I wasn't playing, I was drawing layouts of exhibits, and what animals go where, where the bathrooms and the food courts would be. Needless to say, I was obsessed at the time. But once you have a nice big zoo, beautiful decorations full of happy guests and happy animals, you kind of run out of space, you know? And I have to confess, as a kid, I often let my intrusive thoughts win. Call it morbid curiosity. What would happen if I Thanos snapped half of the fences? The game doesn't stop you from trapping guests in the zoo and unleashing havoc on the populace. Ironic. It's like a reward. Needless to say, I probably spent about as much time destroying and terrorizing people as I did having a regular zoo when I was a kid. This game was my childhood, and playing it 21 years later after it released, I have to say, it still holds up pretty well for what it is. I've played other tycoon games from around the same time, and I just couldn't get into them. Perhaps it's just nostalgia talking, because it's not the most in-depth or best looking game even for its day, but it ignited my passion for simulation games, leading me eventually to play titles like SimCity 4, Tropico, and more. The in-game information on creatures also made me even more fascinated with the animals that call Earth home. Did you play Zoo Tycoon or any other tycoon games as a kid? I would love to hear about it in the comments below. Depending on the interest shown, I might cover the expansions to this game as well as its sequel. Heck, I even might make a video about the reboot that made it a baby game through and through. But that is for another day. Thank you so much for watching. This has been Nolopada. Adios.